And there were a lot. There was a lot of battle. And th this has been uh, something that, that the wider church has used for a long time. It's all scriptural. Um, but we want to, I just wanted to go through that because today we're talking about defending the faith. And this is, this is some, a way of articulating uh, what we believe. There's a lot of churches and, and, and so forth. There's a lot of things out there that call themselves Christian. Um, but this is, the, this is the nuts and bolts. And if this isn't part of it, um, then, then it's probably not really Christian. All right? So, so let's look at this. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 yeah, thank you. All right, there, I know. Keep going. There we go. Yeah. So it goes, we believe in what you can say it with me if you want to, but we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. And for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, and remember Catholic, little c means the whole church, not the R.C. Church. Okay. The holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now it's a skeleton. It's just a skeleton, right? There's a lot of meat that goes on there. And over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the, the kind of meat that goes on there. But today, the first thing we're going to do is pray, because uh, I don't want to talk about anything without the Holy Spirit touching me here. And uh, we're going to talk about articulating our faith here. So let's pray. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I just want to thank you so much that you are always faithful to us. You never say anything bad about us, God. Your son stands in, in, our, in, in our defense. He died for us. Your Holy Spirit is our, our, our advocate and our comforter, Lord God, and we, we know that, that you looked at us because of the blood of Jesus and said, I love you so much, I'm gonna adopt you as my kid. And so God, just today, as we go through this word, I, I pray that your Holy Spirit would touch me, give me utterance and wisdom and knowledge to be able to art articulate your word your way. Keep me out of it, Lord. Help us to know how we can overtly show you and the world, how much we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we, we've been talking about God's will, God's ways. We've been talking about the Ten Commandments. And we've been talking about, uh, boy, we talked about obedience and rebellion. We covered uh, the Shema. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And what that does to us. We've talked about how Jesus said to the, to the Pharisees, you look for the words of life in the scriptures, but you don't come to me. But everything that Moses said was about me. And so a lot of us think we're reading the, the scriptures and we hear the, we see the word scriptures and we go, oh, the New Testament. But that's not what Jesus thought. The scriptures to him was Torah. And it was the law and the prophets and the Psalms. And last night I had... Uh, Somebody, uh, Anthony called me up, and you know, Anthony sometimes gets these anxiety attacks. He hasn't had one for a long time. And, uh, but he called me up and, and said, pray for me, pray for me, I'm dealing with this thing. And I prayed for him, and I said, listen, Anthony, when, when our Lord Jesus was distressed, he quoted Psalms, you know. 
uh, that's that's his that's the word that God said. So go and and start reading Psalms. And he texted me uh, about an hour later, and he said, "Thank you. You know, I've, I've, it's it's gone." And uh, he, he was burying himself in the Psalms, which is a good thing to do. So we've been talking about all this God's will, God's way stuff, and what we're gonna we, we're talking about defending the faith and, and apologetics. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. We'll go to the next thing here. Um, what our goal is through all of this, no matter what, is to show the Lord that we love Him. And because we do love Him. It's not just that we're saved and, and we're going to get to go to heaven someday. Uh, he gave us life now, and heaven comes to wherever Jesus is, the kingdom of God is. And if the Holy Spirit's living in me, then I have to expect that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, has come near just for me, just like it, it did for Jesus. And that's powerful. And we want to, we thank God for that. We want to show the Lord that we love him. But like we've talked about, you know, you can think something. You can think, oh, I love you, I love you. You can think and feel inside of you, oh, I love my spouse, oh, I love my friend. But if you never say it, and if you don't show it, then they never know it, and the world doesn't know it, and that's that's a flatline love right there, okay? And we want our love to have power, and we want it to have God's power, so we want to love the Lord the way he wants to be loved, and the way he wants us to love him. And so in order to do that, we need to know God's will and God's ways, and we know that showing <clears throat> love is a lot more powerful than thinking love, okay? And speaking words, honoring and respectful and loving words, not just to the person that we love, but about the person that we love is extremely powerful too. I mean, when a guy is sitting around and talking about his wife to his friends and saying kind and loving and respectful and honorable things about her to his friends, they know, number one, hey, this guy loves his wife. And they know, number two, not to say anything disparaging about his wife. You know what I mean? Like when you're a little kid and you're on the playground, you know, there's one thing that's completely off rules, off, off, off limits. Don't you talk about my mom, right? You don't do it. So, but you say honorable and loving and kind things. And not only does that person know that, that uh, you love them, but the world knows that you love them. And, and when you can do that, and the world knows that you love a person, it makes that person love you even more, okay? And that's no different for God. We show God that we love him, okay? And we do it with honoring words and respectful words and words of power and words of love. Now remember that we're in a, a triple relationship with God. We talked about that, I like, just scratched on that last week, and I'm going to just teardrop into it again today. But we're in a triple relationship with God, and that shouldn't make anybody surprised because God likes to do things in threes, right? He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is a three-person God, and he made us to be three-part people, body, soul, and spirit. And he has three, three kinds of relationships in mind for us. Uh, the parent relationship, because before that, we're just enemies. There ain't no, there's no relationship there. But when we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, he adopts us and we're his little kids. We're through Jesus. Jesus is the bridegroom and we, the church, are his bride. And there's a marriage relationship there. And then third, there's a friend. Jesus told his disciples, you're, you're not my, just my servants anymore. You're my friends. If you do what I command you, then you're my friends. And so we have a friendship relationship with God, too. And all of those relationships, uh, or I should say that three-part relationship, uh, should always be one where we are able to articulate and and talk to the world about our love for God, okay? And so <clears throat> what we say and think, what we say about God and think about God, because thinking makes us do things about God, is just as important, maybe even more important, as what we say and think to God. See, what I'm saying here is that if I, I, I go into my closet and I pray and that I have a conversation with God and that's between him and me and that is powerful. Don't get me wrong. That God wants us to do that. Jesus said, go and pray in secret. Your father who hears you in secret will reward you. But what we need to do is be able to talk about Jesus 
outside of the closet, outside of the prayer, you know, outside of the secret place, because we want to be able to show, tell the world, show the world that we love the Lord. And that proves to the Lord that we love the Lord. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful, powerful thing. And so what we need to do, what, we can, what can help us with our ability to talk about Jesus outside of our thoughts, but to other people, is we need to clearly understand what we believe, and we need to be able to, to articulate it. Now, that's, that's the, that's the hang-up, I think, for a lot of Christians. You, you could get into the conversation with somebody about your faith and give your testimony, but you, you, you're afraid that the words are going to come out in a stinky, muddled way and do more harm than good, or you're going to get into some weird argument and not be able to answer questions that, that somebody might come up with that are too hard for you. What you need, what, if you can clearly understand what you believe and know your testimony and be able to clearly articulate it, then man, you're going to feel strong in any situation and you're going to be able to do something in every, anything you do, you'll be able to do it in a Christ-like way. And that is all important, okay? Because we're not going out to, to sell people cars or to be their lawyers or to, because, you know, I, there's nothing wrong with that. There, we need car thief salesmen, we need lawyers, and we need doctors, and we need all that stuff. But we're not going out there to do that. We're going out there to find out where the lost sheep are, the ones that are going to hear Jesus' name, Jesus calling them, and come to him and receive life from him. And so we, we need to do everything we do. We need to do it in a Christ-like way. So it's not a, this is, I'm, what I'm talking about isn't a strategy. What I'm talking about is being confident in your ability as Christians to go into the world as little Christs. And just to be able to do that without fear, okay? So what happens a lot is that uh, the church talks about evangelism. The word evangelism, euangelion, is a Greek word that means good news or good message. Like, angelion is where we get the word angels. Angelos, angels, get that? And so angels are typically considered messengers, okay? In the Old Testament, we talk about them as the host, their army, you know, their soldiers. That's true in the New Testament, too, but they're also, whenever they show up, they have a message from God, right? And so good message, that's what the gospel is. It's the good message. Uh, but the way a lot of the church talks about evangelism is, um, well, it's, it's more like apologetics, which is uh, defending the faith, making an argument. And so let's look first at, at evangelism, just really briefly. I, I, this isn't an evangelism sermon, but you need to know the difference. I understand that when you go into the world as a little Christ, and when you're speaking love, and you're giving your testimony, and you're telling people, I don't know why you think what you think or feel what you feel, but all I can do is I can tell you what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in my life. And I can tell you from my experience and from my testimony that the word of, the God, of God is true and it has been proven in my life. And you tell them how. And what happens is, what did I say? Wherever Jesus is, the kingdom of God is. And when heaven comes to earth, that's evangelism. And let me tell you, that is where God, where God shows up, that's evangelism, all right? And that's what we hope for when we go and spread the good news. And when Jesus in Mark 16 said, you're going to go and you're going to preach the good news to all creation, not just to people 